What is going on, IPA fans out there? Welcome back to another video of mine. This one's actually going to be a bit more interesting than my other videos since typically I just do weekly uploads of various amount of battles for various leagues. But for this one, it's going to be a, a bit more of a compressed video for what, as you can read from the title, is the uh, my IPA season. Well, uh, <laughs> I started the season 2 0 with pretty strong differential, and uh, I was looking pretty strong. I was looking like I was going to be like the guy to beat. And, um, well, it's, uh, let me put it this way. I'm going to have this, I'm going to have my, um, my last, it would be my last, my last four games in a nutshell. So just give me a second. It all started with Jarrett as a mega, with my Charizard to kill. His last win con, he one hit KO'd my Charizard, and to kill from full was just like he had to get an absolute max percentage roll. The damage cock was like 80 something to 100% exactly. So it all started with that, and uh, it just got worse from there. And then there was Michael's Munium Z plus two plus two Mew, which um, went on to full on sweep my team and get 5 0'd. So at this point we are now 2-2 two and two, and uh, it didn't get any better as you'll see pretty soon as you can see I actually ended up winning this game but at this point of the season I had traded my Togekiss for Tristan's Tapu Fini and I kind of forgot about that and if we go back to the turn 1 I have Togekiss instead of Tapu Fini so this was an automatic forfeited loss so big rip to that but anyways going back to um, obviously the feels bad man because that, that, that has basically expressed my season after we started 2-0 ever since then we went 1-3 um, again two of those losses I kind of controversial well not really anyways back to what I was saying I have been gone for a, a good bit so let me get my train of thought going so yeah I am 3-3 three three now and playoffs are they're, they're really probable but I just gotta basically win out like, I gotta win all my games, and if I lose, I probably will not be making this to the playoffs. So, uh, these three videos will be my team and our journey towards making it back to our former glory. So, we're going to go on to our Week 7 game versus Jared, possibly the most important game in our next three games, because our, our last remaining three games are Jared, Max, and Brett. And Max and Brett, they've been a bit 50 iffy. Well, not 50 50, I meant to say, yeah, they've been a bit iffy with their games. And, like, Max has had some amazing games. Brett's had some pretty good games, too. He's had some wins, and he's had some pretty questionable losses. But Jarrett, you know, he's just very hard to beat most of the time. He, he knows how to win when he needs to win. And for people who know me pretty well, he's probably my biggest rival in Pokemon in general. So I like to beat him whenever I can, especially of a game of this magnitude. So. Let's just get on to that game, and hopefully our feels bad moment won't feel so bad anymore. So I'll pause now, we are back. And bada bing, bada boom, we are back, and here we are versus Jarrett. Trying something new with the dimensions, hopefully it doesn't look too choppy. If it does, oh well, just kind of deal with it. Because if it is a failure, we'll, we won't do it ever again in the H Trader Josh franchise. Anyways, so we got Jarrett, he's rocking, he's rocking to our Y, the Alolan Muck, which I kind of figured he'd bring this time around for the Lego. Hariyama, the Levani, Mimikyu, the Bane to my existence, and Kieran Black. So, last time he didn't bring webs, so I didn't prefer it at all, and he actually brought it this time, so I was like, well, what can you do? He has a Mimikyu, which he knows, like, I have a history of, like, just not being able to deal with Mimikyu too well at all. Like, last season when Josh had it, it single-handedly beat my team, and then nearly brought him back during the playoffs last season, so... It's just a mod I don't like to deal with. And here it is, so I had to deal with it. And uh, he has a Kieran Black, pretty big threat, Hariyama. Yeah, um, he's been using Hariyama pretty effectively as a wall, so I'm like, interested to see what happens. And then I just expect like an AV Muck with Pursuit for the Lego, which just makes a lot of sense. So I'm bringing a just a pretty defensive Hippod on. Um, Scarf Knee Lego to, just, I think it was to Revenge Kill something. Uh, I don't I forget. It might have been for Scarf, yeah, I think it was like for Scarf here in Black, and for some reason I forgot, I, well, actually no, I felt like I didn't need enough speed to outspeed a max speed Zard, because I was thinking, oh, he's not going to bring BD Zard Y, but I just kind of forgot the web for things, so I don't have enough speed to outspeed a base 100 with a Scarf.
Scarf at plus one. Like if a base hunter is plus, if a base 400 is plus one, AK with webs on my side, and you'll see how that kind of plays later on. Anyways, I also have Greninja. I forget what I think I'm like the same set as last time with the expert belt with like Rock Slide, Low Kick, Ice Beam, and Dark Pulse for them uh, for yourself, which you didn't even bring this time around, which single handedly won him the game last time, so kind of interesting. Uh, just a defensive top of Finny. Uh, Banded Primate, first time Primate has ever made, first time Primate debuted in the, uh, the season, so I'm glad I brought, decided to, glad I was able to bring him into a game that kind of mattered, and just a max speed, somewhat invested into attack Zardex, to, it, max speed to speed, uh, speed tie against his Zard, and again, not every day you get to see a Zard versus Zard matchup in the league, so, and you'll actually, spoilers, be able to see a Zard versus Zard turn matchup later on in the game, and you'll see how that ends up so anyways let's just get into the match in three two one and yeah so i'm just want to get a nice vanity turn off i don't see why not and i know he's gonna switch out here and scarf stone edge he has no reason to go into his defensive Hariyama, which i find out he is defensive here because a standard max hp max attack Hariyama would have taken a lot more than that so i do know he is definitely invested into his death so anyways this is my opportunity to get rocks up and i know he knows that so he's gonna get webs up which kind of sucks but there's not really much i can do about that so at this point, like clicking um, DD is pretty free because like it's not like maybe good can come in and really hit me really hard unless he's Ghost Team Z, which I do expect for him to bring. Looking at the team that he does have, so you'll see how that comes into play later on. Anyways, I could have gone for more DDs, but I figured it was just best to just hit him for Dragon Claw because it was going to a KO no matter what his spread was, even if he was max max. Anyways, he has Rock Tomb, and I could roost and actually be at more HP, but. What I was thinking here is I force him to try to revenge kill me with something because I'm actually faster than everything on his team right now. And this is the only thing that can actually come in and revenge me. So I'm, I'm forcing the speed tie here and again this is where the Zard vs Zard matchup is coming in. Jarrett is more than willing to actually potentially lose a speed tie and potentially put himself into a really bad position. So you can tell that's why I figured not going for another roost and trying to be at more HP was worth it. Because I was still going to be in range of a Dragon Pulse. So I was like, okay, this is the way to go. So, anyways, I'm going for the speed tie. I'm hoping I get it, but knowing um, how Jarrett is able to just, you know, not saying he gets lucky, but he gets really good coin flips most of the time against me, and uh, just as expected, I uh, I do lose it. So at this point, I'm going to go into my iPad on, and I'm going to double into my new Lego. Hoping he doesn't have EQ, and. He does click Fire Blast, and he does not click EQ next turn, so I'm just going to guess that he does not have it. As he actually outspeeds me here, clicks Roost, as I click Power Gem. And um, again, like I mentioned earlier, I don't have enough speed to outspeed a base 100 with webs on my side. So, right now Jared thinks I'm not Scarf, he thinks I'm just a normal knee Lego set. Last time I did bring Electrium Z for his Empoleon, so he may think I'm the same, well not the same set, but just not a Choice Scarf set. So. This is really important later on, you'll see why. So, he swaps out, so Zard Y will die to rocks, which is pretty great. Because I don't have to deal with having, um, I don't have to worry about getting the sun out of my side because I prefer sand to try to chip his uh, low and muck down and, like, basically tri tri chipping down the, his team of sand is pretty good. That's why I was more than willing to take HP from my own team with my own sand. Anyways, he does sack off the, uh, the muck, and I know a Leaf Blade won't even 2k on me, but I don't. I can't really touch this, like my Earthquake is 4 times resistant, I could Whirlwind, but I want to be at as much HP as possible to handle that Mimikyu, because a Wood Hammer slash Ghost of Z can do a lot of damage, and this Pokemon is going to be really important to try to take that on, since Knee Lego will just die to any move, Greninja will die because I'm not Scarf, and I'll just die to Play Rough, slash Wood Hammer, whatever he has, Finny, same kit, cause, and Primate, same cause, so like, a pattern is very important in keeping healthy to even have a chance to beat Jarrett late game, so... I gotta swap this thing out, I got no choice. So I gotta go into my Greninja, I gotta sack it off. It's not doing anything in this game, like, at all. Looking at his team, so... Now for the count, and here comes Primeape. He either sacks his Levani, which is really good for me, or he sacks something else in his team. Because I'm basically plus three, because I'm banded, and now plus two with the webs, which is pretty good. And, yeah, I just take that out with the U-turn. And now here comes the ND Lego. I'm hoping he makes a choke play here, which he actually does, with, by going into his, uh, Cure Black. Better play, in my opinion, for him would have been going into Mimikyu, but it's uh, it's whatever. But the reason why he made this play was because he didn't think I was Choice Scarf because of the scenario with the Zard Y. 
So now this is really getting into his head as he thinks he can just outspeed me and probably just kill me off with like a Dragon Claw or Power. Because I'm not even sure if Ice Beam not a life form kills me. Because the Lego is pretty strong on this Bedef and HP stat. So, anyways, he goes into this thing pretty comfortably thinking he has this in the bag, but little does he know, Power Gem is just gonna clean knock this thing out of the park. And Neat Lego is now looking pretty fancy. And uh, he did question why in the world I outsped. Actually, no, he knew I outsped, but he was like, why didn't you have enough speed to outspeed Zard? And I was like, oh, whoop, I forgot about webs. And I didn't prep for webs exactly. And that actually worked out really well for me. If anything, it might have actually just won, up, won me the game. But this thing is now in, and this thing could still win the game if I don't play carefully enough. So I got to basically break this thing sub. He gets an SD up because he knows he needs it to actually do damage to me right now, which is like pretty smart in this part. Anyways, so, anyways, I gotta make a play here, because if I stand with my Hippadon, and I, if I stand with my Hippadon and I get Ghost Team Z, I lose the game, and it's kind of a 50-50, because Jared probably knows that I can swap to fodder off his Ghost Team Z, and he knows that he can maybe just click a certain move, and that would do him good, like, let's say he has Wood Hammer, or let's say he just predicts my swap into Finny and just clicks the two Shadow Claws up probably to kill me, so this is a really, really tricky play, and I'm just going to go into my hard Finny, like, there's nothing else I can do, as he actually is going to click the Ghost Team Z here, which is awesome, because now my Hippodon is sitting kind of pretty against his Mimikyu, well, Sand is chipping him pretty low, which is really what I want, because Earthquake will start doing some damage, as now he's at 76%, so here we go, I'm gonna go to my Hippodon, I gotta put this thing down in range to where Sand will take it out. He goes for a Shadow Claw, does absolutely nothing to me because the pattern is thick, and you know, that's pretty good. And he actually has, <laughs> he does end up clicking Woodhammer, I'm guessing Woodhammer didn't kill me from full, I kind of expected it to because Woodhammer is pretty strong, and Mimikyu is not that weak. And anyways, basically it's now 1-1, one, one, and this comes down to if Levani crits me with Leaf Blade, so I gotta hope and pray he doesn't. Here we go, moment of truth, <clears throat> if I get crit, I'm out of playoffs, if I don't get crit, we have a chance we are alive, and here we go, Leaf Blade comes off, and it does 72% to me, I don't get crit, and new turn does finish off the game, so GG will play it to Jared, I, um, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty interesting, very, very interesting game, as, you know, the, web, the, the choice guard situation with the webs really, really saved me. And as a result, we do pick up the 1 0 win versus Jared. We're probably even record now. We're pretty even at least. He might have one win against me. I don't know. This, he's just a guy I hate, hate, hate to play. I, I just can't stand it. So, anyway, so that is that out of the way. So now we are going to go on to my match versus Max. But Max was AFK. And he was AFK the week before. So Tristan, who was a mod in the IPA ended up um, subbing for him, so he was he is my opponent, but he's under Max's name technically with his team, and it still counts as a real game, so let's just get into that replay, so I'll pause it back. And bada bing bada boom, we are back, and as you can see, Max did bring the Gallade, the Sylveon, the Salazzle, Mega Hair, is it? No, normal Heracross, Mega Gallade, I already mentioned, Heracross, Swallow, and Gastron. So bringing a bit of a fighting core <clears throat> with, you know, Salazzle, Gastron, Sylveon, well, and um, I was kind of scared of Suncore with Torgo plus Venusaur actually, like I don't have a lot for that, so I was glad to see that he went through this round. But yeah, as you can see with my team, bringing the Zardex once again, pretty similar set, I think it's just like, and actually I don't think I brought max speed this time, I don't know what I'm outspeeding with this set, but I didn't think I had to, I didn't think I had to bring max speed, I forgot, I don't remember what it was, but some speed, some attack, some HP, so you gotta know. Celestila invested towards where it gets a beast boost in defense because it does a pre has a pretty good matchup versus this team. Takes on Sylveon, the Gallade, the Heracross, the Swallow, if it doesn't knock, lock itself into Spike's Heat Wave, stuff of that nature. Never melt, never melt, never melt Ice Cryogonal because he has a Gastron and it's kind of annoying versus my team, just a bit. And not to mention, he doesn't have the best switch to Ice. And Cryogonal is pretty strong, man. Don't underestimate it. And it was a pretty good rapid spin versus his team, and he didn't bring rocks, so luckily I don't have to worry about hazards, and you know, since I do have a Zard, you gotta kinda worry about rocks, anyways. Next is Taco Finny. Um, it was supposed to be a Z Haze set, so I can just put myself up the full, but I put the wrong Z Crystal. So, I, I have a pretty useless move. I mean, Haze might come through, and 
guess if I'm like, well, if you want to get to Galate, I can just completely I could just click haze until I die if I really wanted to, but this is the only, it's the only case scenario I can see that working. And uh, anyways, I got a paddle without slack off, again, another set I messed up on, but it was, uh, didn't really matter, luckily. And then I think I had pretty, pretty good, I think it was, I forgot what it was, but uh, this was a pretty good, and it just, uh, I think it had gunk shot, grass knot, ice beam, and something else. It hit a lot of his team pretty hard, so I was like, hey, Green Ninja, you can come along, why not? So, anyways, let's just get into the game, as, remember guys, I gotta win out to even have a chance to make playoffs. Actually, no, if I win out, I make playoffs, 100%. We're not the Dallas Cowboys here. So anyways, well, let's go in 3, 2, 1, and here we go. So I'm just going to lead in my bot on pretty predictive lead uh, throughout the weeks because, you know, rocks are just pretty good. But I don't want to take a surf because I had a feeling this might not just be scald. It might just be a little more than surf. Don't get me wrong, I would have taken that pretty well, but I just didn't want to eat that to the face. Anyways, I find out this isn't like Z Crystal Salazzle. This could have been like Grass Beam. I, I think it, no, I don't think it gets Solar Beam. But it could have been Fire Z for my Paddon and just hit it pretty hard. And I do knock off the Expert Belt, which is pretty interesting because I guess it does a little bit more damage to, Sal to um, my Finny and my Celesteela. But besides that, it was a pretty interesting item. I don't know why he really had it, but interesting nonetheless. We both take a bit of sand chip, which is fine. I don't really mind getting chipped down in my Salazzle. I mean, my... Oh, Jesus Christ. I was like, go to my Hippodon, and I'm just going to get up my rocks here. I take two flame, I take, I take two flame throws pretty easily. Luckily, he's not Fire Blast, which I would have been able to take two of anyways. And I would have been more than happy just to sack off my Hippodon at that point, since it did what it had to do. Anyways, I click Earthquake, and this does, a, this does way too much damage for what it was. Like, I'm not, I'm not invested into my attack, and I did 40% to a Gastron. So I find out he's pretty special defensive. And I know he's not invested to special attack at all because that surf is about a mid roll on a non invested Gastron. So he's just been deaf according to my calculus. Anyways, I click freeze right because I don't want to be uh, passive and just click recover, which I do have. I'm able to get a pretty clean amount of damage to the point where Moonblast will take out the Gallade, which is pretty sweet. As Tristan will make a pretty good read, just a pretty good overall play. Click Sleaf Blade on my top of Finny. And I don't get to a kill because I did invest myself to take those pretty well. As I click Moonblast now, I don't have taunt on this unfortunately. I wish I did over like Z Haze. I wish I was just leftovers here <laughs> with uh, taunt, but it's all good. Anyways, I click freeze dry expecting for this to kill and it doesn't, so I'm like, well, I gotta go to my hippodon and just get the sand up and that'll put it down to zero, so good job with the on doing what he had to do. Just kill the Salazzle with the sand. I think that counts as a kill. I don't really care. I don't have looked at the stats since I like, too. Anyways, here comes the like, Gallade. And it's just gonna come out for Drain Punch. I clicked Whirlwind in case this thing tried to go for like a Saw or a Bulgum or an SD. And I would have been able to just get that out of the field. Anyways, here comes my Zard, and I'm just gonna click DD straight up. Like, he can't kill me with any move. Even if, if like, if he clicks close combat, that will do a decent amount of damage, but I would live and I'd kill it. Anyways, I know this isn't Fist Death, so that's just gonna die to a Dragon Claw that gets my damn job. Here comes the, um, the Sylveon. I don't really know why. I guess I wasn't in the range of a Scarf Boobers. But, yeah, that is indeed what this fellow is. It is a Scarf Swallow. I was thinking in the game there was no way this was Scarf because it doesn't wall break versus my team. But it was, and I was like, interesting. And, I don't get me wrong, I was thinking if he's Scarf, I don't know if he'll actually just lock himself in a Boomer straight up because Celesteela looks like it just straight up wins if he does. <clears throat> so I was unsure about him actually doing so, and he actually just clicks U-turn. So I basically get another kill with Dragon Claw, which is pretty fun. As he goes into the Heracross, and that's just going to straight up die. And so Mega Zard doing what Mega Zard should always do. And I do realize Zard is somewhat useful. Well, not really, it dies to every move, but let's say he locked himself in the Heat Wave. I can just kill something off again, and that's pretty good. And like, but I was say, okay, okay, I actually do have a reason. Let's say he, I go in my Karago and he clicks Heat Wave. Well, he wouldn't click Heat Wave, but let's say he, I... Let's say it ever came out to a situation where he had to lock himself in a choice scarf heat wave. I can go to my Zara, click like Dragon Dance, and if he goes in a Gallade, I would out speed and I would kill it. And then he would have to go into a swallow, and then I would win from there. So, it was something like that. Either way, the game was in the bag. I just go into my Celesteela, I click Heavy Slam, and I get a defense boost. And I have leftovers, so actually, I don't have leftovers. I think I had an Octoberry, yeah. Anyways, he clicks Drain Punch, and yeah, at plus one, I'm just eating that for breakfast, and Heavy Slam does to a KO pretty easily, so this is just going to be an easy 4-0 win in my favor, as Celesteela does what Celesteela does, and just like that, we do win two games in a row, so the Texas Church Wings are looking like we have a shot 
in the playoffs. So, lastly, we have the Brett, the one and only. So, let's just get into the game. In fact, let's just go into it right now. Boom. <clears throat> this, um, this, I had a modest twist graphic ninja for his, um, his Hoopa, not to mention, like, you, actually, it wasn't modest, I think it was rash, because uninvested U-turn after rocks does kill a Hoopa unbound with U-turn, which is pretty good. A, uh, never melt, L again, never melt ice car, I'll go, because I, I mean, I could have brought specs, but I like the ice better, because hitting Clef game with HP, it might, it might have been spec, I don't know what it was, I was, I, I know specs did a decent amount of going to his team, like, looking at it, like, he doesn't have a great ice resist besides Clef key which kind of gets stopped by most of my team. And anyways, this was, this, his leftovers. I am a leftovers taunt, HS Madness, Moonblast, Calm Mind, Top of Finney. It's a pretty interesting set, but a set that could do work if need be. Um, a DD Zardex, I, yeah, DD Zardex with uh, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Roost, yeah, DD, because I think, yeah, he does have a Toxic Pack, so I was, 100% expecting the talk specs to come, but he didn't bring it, which is pretty good. But, yeah, the, the coverage of ground plus dragon just hit him pretty hard, so I was like, hey, let's just do it. And my dog is, uh, doing something. Pepe? Pepe? No? No, Pepe? No. Don't do that. Alright, anyways, this is my stealth rocket pod on. This time I do have slack off, and then the Celesteela is a more spadef set to uh, deal with uh, tornadoes. And potentially, like, a especially offensive hoop on bound. So, anyways, let's just get into the game. So, let's go in 3, 2, 1, and boom. Alright, so I'm just going to lead with my uh, Greninja. In case he leaves the hoop on bound, I can, I can get a clean U turn off. But, he does leave with the Torn. And, um, by the way, I should mention, he did say he was going to bring the memes. So, I, that's definitely what I expected. And, since he played the ICU in turn 1 of my Greninja, I definitely knew what was coming. So, but I did expect Heat Wave nonetheless, so I will take it pretty well. Click the Leech Seed and Leftovers plus Leech Seed, Leech, Leech seed Recovery will put me up pretty high. Now I get a free Heavy Slam off here and does really nothing to the Clef Key, meaning he's like absolutely fizz dev. With Iron Defense, and I, um, I'm sort of expecting a Iron Defense Calm Mindset because that set could actually do a decent amount of work to me in the right situation. So at this point, I'm like, well, might as well get my rocks up. Let's pull out the citrus berry, which is like, wow, I don't. That's good stuff. That's about what Verlis would bring, which I was his goal. He wanted to be a Verlis fight here. As uh, here comes another training kiss. He's not boosted in calm mind yet, so he is uh, luckily not doing too much damage to me. So I just whirlwind him up into the Sharpedo, which is um, could have been much worse. I was really worried about pulling out the superior. And I just go into my top of Finney. He clicks protect for some reason. That was the play to make. But it's whatever. Anyways, I am just going to fire off a, I believe, a move blast here. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, well, I don't know what Klefki could do to me because I'm in the misty, misty terrain. Then I see we both click calm mind, so I'm like, well, time to click, uh, time to click uh, taunt because, you know, I don't want to deal with this. So I'm going to be able to win the calm mind war now because he can. He taunts it for three turns, so I can just calm mind up during those turns, which is pretty good. So at this point, I'm looking at his team, and he only has a couple of good physical attackers that can really break through me. And I'm like pretty, I think I'm like essentially max fizz def. I was like max HP, 200, like 20 fizz def, and the rest of the spadef. Anyways, he does get another calm mind as I just click taunt. And uh, keep in mind, I do have Nature's Madness, so I won't have to rely on just getting Moonblast chip to put him down pretty low. I can just click Nature's Madness a couple times, and then Moonblast will equal the damage of what Nature's Madness would do at that point. Which is always pretty good. So now, at this point, as you can see, I am Max Max in my Spadef and my Special Attack. So I'm just going to fire off a Nature's Madness, put him down to 47%. Luckily, the Clef Key doesn't have leftovers, so he's not getting like any good residual recovery. As Clef Key has to recycle with his just Berry, which is... Uh, it's a pretty good idea. It's a pretty fun idea. Recycle. Uh, might have been better if it was a pinch berry, but I guess it does the same result. Like, they both put you... I mean, I guess if you go up to down 25%, it's better than a citrus berry, but it's uh, it really depends on the situation. You know what I mean. Anyways, Journey Kiss comes out. At this point, it's looking like a game that Top of Finney will win by itself. And I don't want this game to go on forever, because he is going to be untaunted, so he's going to be able to get off another recycle so what I was thinking here I can just taunt on the recycle actually no I think I click moonblast first 
because I was trying to scout the damage, but he can't technically do this and he would be able to win. So I was like, well, I'm going to speed this up and make this game end a lot sooner than it should. I'm going to click taunt here now, I believe. So now he's forced to click draining kiss with a plus some. Yeah, he's only plus one in special attack. Now he's back to neutral. That's how broken the blast is. It's kind of crazy, actually. And Tapu Fini is now up to full at plus six, plus six in special attack and special defense. And uh, he's going to reveal to be a uh, phys def. I mean, a physically offensive superior, which is like hilarious as hell. Because that actually that was the best scenario for him. As now here comes the Mesprit. There's a chance I outspeed him if he's not speed invested, which I do, which is pretty fun. And now here comes the Hoopa Unbound, which I also somehow outspeed. I might have, I probably would have lived to hit if it was not super effective against me, so I don't think that really mattered. And here comes the uh, Tornadus. He goes for a Hurricane. Luckily, there's no confusion, no BS, as I can just kill him off with the Moonblast. And lastly is the Sharpedo. And. Sharpedo unless he had like Poison Fang, which even then I don't think as a Mega killed me from here because like Tapu Fini is really really bulky, so I'm really I really don't think that would have killed me. Like Sharpedo is strong, but I don't think he's that strong as he reveals the rage, and that is going to be GG. Well played to Brett. Sad I had to do it something like that, but this game actually had a huge importance. So I couldn't meme along with him. Otherwise I probably would have, but you know it's all good. So that is GG. Well played. So, just like that, folks, we ended up making the playoffs at 6-3 and three after going 1-3 and three after starting 2-0. and oh. Not very good numbers you like to deal with, but 3-0 and oh is a good number, and I take those. So, just give me a second as we're going to have a little commemoration as we're going to go from the feels... We're going to go from... Whoops, whoops, whoops. Wait. Oh, I got to fix my screen. Wait. Okay. I'll, you know what? I'll do live editing right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. So, originally at the start of this video, at three and three, look, not looking too good for playoffs. We're like near the bottom of the, near the bottom of the rankings at this point. This was originally our picture. Our fuse bad man. After starting so good, this was us. Just you know, teary eyes all over him, big frown on her face, and heartbroken. That was us at first. But we went from feels bad man to guess what? We went from feels bad man to the one and only Robbie Rotten. Yes, the man, the myth, the legend, the man himself. He He's loved by everybody. He is pulled off the impossible, and he's still alive, still kicking. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful existence this guy has lived. And just like us, we have pulled off the impossible, looking like we were going to like be absolutely down for the count after being last season's champion, just not even making playoffs. If we were able to win out, beat Jarrett, and, you know, Jarrett was basically our biggest, biggest opponent, and I was able to hand single-handedly handle Max's team with Tristan on the helm, and beat Brett with his memes, with the Fertilisify on his side, which, let me tell you, is scarier than it sounds. And just like that, we were in playoffs, and we played Josh once again in the wild card, just like last season, so awfully reminiscent to the start of our championship run, and just like how history repeats itself, I hope history repeats itself once again as we become the second back-to-back -back champion in IPA history along with Owen 482. So, you know, you gotta hope and pray, man. Because Pokemon is a game of RNG, a game of luck. And you never know, with luck, with the coin flip on your side, nothing is impossible in this game. So, that's all for me. With Robbie Rotten looking at you with his big smile and his heart of gold, I wish you goodbye, and I'll be seeing you in the IPA playoffs. Au revoir.